Well, welcome to week one and two. Come on, Bella. Featuring Bella. Can't have that, that's camera equipment. I tore my Achilles and I'm having fun. It's an odd sentence to say it's been about, I tore it on June 16th. Okay, Sunday, June 16th, I tore my Achilles. It's been about a month since the injury and a week since surgery. A little bit of background on what happened. I was playing basketball in San Marcos. I finished about two or three games. And as I'm finishing game three, uh, I'm walking off the court, about three or four steps off the court, going to get my drink and I feel a pop. I don't hear anything, nobody heard anything, but I could have swore someone was just mad and kicked me in the back of the, the heel. I was like, oh bro, I, I fried you, so you're mad. I genuinely thought someone kicked me in the, the back of the leg because they were mad I was frying them. Apparently that wasn't the case. What had actually happened was I tore my Achilles from walking. Wow. So now I have a new story every time someone asks me, okay? So the, the story for today is I was saving my dog from a burning building and I jumped off the third floor balcony, did a parkour roll, hit my heel on the concrete, and I tore my Achilles that way. If that's what you hear, that's the story for the day. But to be serious, um, it took me about three-ish weeks to get the surgery and here's why i'll explain why because everyone has a method to their madness mine's a little bit different okay money got to be made bills got to be paid that's one of the main things so i'll give a little timeline this is week one going into week two post-op to kind of give like a, a benchmark of where you may be at or where i am right now so tore my achilles june 16th ish it's a sunday uh went to the er that night they did an ultrasound and an x-ray confirmed that there was some fluid in a space where there should be achilles tendon i took off work the next day that monday i went back to work tuesday with the splint and the ace bandage all that and just crutched it out for about a week i went to my orthopedic surgeon that monday got my air cast walking boot thing i had that boot for about two weeks now during that two weeks i got the mri because i was i was leaning on the side of non-operative repair but i'm 25 so he, he was like dude you're young you're athletic you're very active and fit we usually recommend surgery for those cases but it's up to you i was like let me see what the mri says first because depending on the gap size i'll probably go operative got the mri four centimeter gap bro four centimeters that's for those of you who don't use centimeters and millimeters and the what is it imperial metric whatever it's called that's an inch and a half gap okay that's gonna fill up with scar tissue and re-rupture that is a surgical repair so i went ahead scheduled the surgery got the surgery about a week ago which was july 5th i'm currently in a cast i get the cast off on this upcoming tuesday which is july 16th so i'll get the cast off they'll saw it off they'll take out the stitches and i'll be back in the walking boot so that's where i am now it, it's, I'll, I'll give a, little, a few details on the surgery as well the tendon was actually starting to heal already i drink collagen every day in my coffee so I already started the healing process. The healing process started as soon as I got injured, just because I have that collagen kind of always there. The problem was, since it took me three weeks to get the surgery, they had to clear out some of the scar tissue because that's not really, it's not tendon tissue, so it's not as, it doesn't expand and stretch, it's kind of rigid. That can cause a, a, a re-rupture, they call it. I got the surgery. The surgery is only like a 20, 30 minute procedure. It's really quick, depending on a few things. Mine ruptured in the middle of the tendon, so that's what made it quick. Put sutures in the top half, sutures in the bottom half, brought it together, tied it off, sealed my leg back up. That's really it. Now, if you have it come off the bone, that's when they have to suture through the tendon and all that. And they have to put uh, like holes in your calcaneal bone, which is your heel. They have to drill holes in there, anchor the, the sutures into your heel so it can tie that tendon down until it heals. Fortunately, I didn't have to do that. Um, but I will give some details on the surgery. If you can get the nerve blocker, get the nerve blocker. I got it. Now, in some places in the US, I don't know why, but they put like a whole catheter in your leg. They give you like this morphine pump thing to push the medicine through. They didn't do that. So for me, I forgot what it's called. I think it's Exparel. It's really just a local anesthetic. It's a long-term slow release anesthetic, local. So kind of like when you get teeth work done, what they do is they kind of inject it into the, the muscle tissue and the nerve um, above the injury. So for about two and a half days, I could not feel anything from my kneecap down all right it's day two post-op and i'm feeling a little bit better really and i know you can't see me right now really the only difference is that like i can move my toes again the the nerve block is starting to wear off so the nerve block 
the nerve block stays in your system for a hot minute, okay? And all this bracelet I have on does is say, hey, um, just says, hey, this person had local anesthetic in this foot to keep it numb. If I were getting like a car accident or something like that, it just says, hey, don't give them this type anymore. I keep this on until it wears off fully. I have my post-op appointment tomorrow about 9 o'clock in the morning to get my cast put on. I'll have a cast for two weeks and I'll go into the walking boot um, for a few more with the wedges in it. And then, yeah, that, that should pretty much be it. But, yeah, it's, it's going well. I can finally move my toes again. I can feel them again. Um... Yeah, that's that's day two. There's not really much to, to update on it. It feels the same as day one, just listen. This right here is going to be the best position to put your foot in. Not straight like this, it's uncomfortable. Lay it like that to the side. It's going to be way more comfortable when that nerve block starts to wear off. Which I did not mind at all because uh, it was kind of uncomfortable, I'm not going to lie. I'm not really like one to... I'm not really one to say a bunch of crazy stuff when I'm on anesthetic anyway. That only happened once. You don't remember falling asleep? Mm -mm. You doing good? Okay. You have any pain? Mm -hmm. no? It's a little bit sore, but I did take a knife to my leg, so it's a little bit cold too. Good sleep? Mm -hmm. I don't know what you're recording for. I'm not gonna say nothing. I crazy. know you're not gonna say nothing crazy. <laughs> I'm just recording it for your mom. Oh uh, yeah, I'm good. You good? Mm -hmm. I woke up, surgery went fine. They asked you a bunch of questions beforehand, like days leading up to, I have asthma, so they intubated me just to make sure I kept breathing. And I t had to take my inhaler like three or four times the morning of the procedure just to make sure everything was good and I could breathe and all that, cause that's important, but they intubated me. So when I woke up, my throat was a bit sore, was fine, stayed at my parents' house for a few days. Cause we live on the third floor. Me and my wife live on the third floor of our apartment complex. So that would be kind of much going up there, still off the anesthetic. And so I just laid on the couch at my parents' house. Each day, I would go upstairs and sleep, but I'd come down during the day to like get moving and stuff like that. Um, I wasn't able to wiggle my toes until two days after the operation, and that was not my big toe. I'm talking like the other four toes. I was able to wiggle those. And what they told me was take the pain medication every night. And then once you're able to have the strength back in your leg, once the anesthetic starts to wear off a little bit, to take the pain medication again. Because I'm telling you, it's a weird feeling when that, that, uh, that local anesthetic is is in your leg because bro you are trying like with all your mind power to, to move that foot and it's not moving it's a it's a weird feeling I didn't like it but better than having to be loaded up on pain medications to just have it numb for a few days because the main days of pain are days one two and three or so they tell me so I only need a pain medication for like three days if you just if you do decide to get it when you get up from sitting down or laying down and you go to crutch somewhere like the bathroom or the kitchen or whatever remember you've been laying down Give your body time to adjust and you've had your your foot elevated above your heart as they tell you all that blood is not in your leg so once you get up that blood's gonna rush back to the leg and it is not comfortable so i went back to work tuesday but the monday after the procedure so friday saturday sunday i was in the splint monday i got my cast and i was i've been in a cast since the monday after the procedure which was last week i'll get my cast off tuesday I'll be in the walking boot for whoever knows how long, probably like three or four weeks. But this is just to outline like weeks one and two. Now, the reason I say at the beginning I ruptured my Achilles and I'm having fun is because I'm an athlete. I, I, I'm a musician. I make beats. Like, I'm not just like tied to one thing. So I'm not really suffering mentally when it comes to the injury. I have a bunch of things I can do. Now, for people who like this is their life, they like sports is the only thing they do. It, it, it may suck a little bit. The only time like my anxiety, I have anxiety. The only time it has really been kicked up a notch is being in this cast for the past week because I'm not claustrophobic. OK, I got the MRI. I fell asleep during the MRI. I was fine. But this thing is claustrophobic at times because if you leave your leg down for too long, the blood rushes there and starts to swell. You feel claustrophobic. It's it's too much. I'm used to the walking boot, right, before the cast. So the other day I went to go like unvelcro it and I realized, oh, I'm in the cast. This is stuck on me for a hot minute. But it is what it is, okay? But yeah, I'm having fun because I, 
I can focus on other content that I want to do instead of having to worry about, oh, let me go to this court. Oh, there's no one there to play against. Oh, what a bummer. Let me go back. Let me just film a workout and go back home. Like I can focus on the stuff I actually want to do, which is like the, the journey to the drop off series. It's it's more than just playing 1v1. It's like a whole thought process, teaching people how to read the game, analyzing my own game, breaking it down, interviews. There's a whole bunch. I can focus on the podcast a little more um, and just random stuff. So it, it's been cool. I can focus on music again because truth be told, I've been playing guitar since I was like 16, 17. I ain't picked up that guitar in probably, oh Lord, since before wedding planning. It's been a long time time bro so i can hop back on that but it's important and i always say this for athletes and anyone you need to make sure you have other hobbies outside of your main sport or job or whatever because if you don't it's going to drive you crazy if you get injured or something like that just because i'm down right now does not mean i'm out if you if you get what i'm saying so it's only a temporary thing it's not an injury that lasts forever but I will tell you this, when it comes to the mentality, especially as an athlete, because I play multiple sports, I play tennis, soccer, basketball, right? Those are the main ones. The mentality, every time I get injured, it never, it never ceases. Once you get injured and you can get back to that level of play, you're still not technically at that level of play because you have that mental blockade, mental barrier that's stopping you because you're like, ooh, let, let me not cut too hard because it might happen again. Trust me, I get it. When I landed on my brother's foot, it was the same thing. I went to physical therapy, I was back at the level of play, but then mentally I was like, okay, I gotta move a little slower, I can't be as shifty. That mental block is necessary, but sometimes you need to learn to push past it so you're not like, I don't know, your own worst enemy. So this is just a, a summation of week one, post-op and going into week two. Week two, I will be in the boot. We'll see, it's gonna be an interesting journey. It's gonna be part of the journey to the drop off. Uh, it's gonna be like a road to recovery special mini series within and also I'm gonna separate those videos out and make it its own thing too. I'll also be documenting physical therapy. I have a, like an auto tracking tripod attachment so that'll be cool too. Just a lot of stuff. So stay tuned. This is week one and two of Achilles rupture post-operation. A hooper who tore his uh, Achilles tendon. Recovery time. It'll be six months till I'm able to like play basketball again. It'll be nine months till I can like play competitively because I have to do the physical therapy. I have to get my strength back. I have to build muscle back in my leg. I've already started to lose muscle in my right calf, bro. I'm looking at it right now and the cast is physically looser because there's like space there because I'm losing muscle in my calf as we speak. My left calf has actually gotten a little bit bigger because I, <laughs> I, I get tired of the crushes. They start bruising under my arms. So what I do is I like hop everywhere, single leg. So my left leg is gonna work out. It's still explosive. I'm a left leg jumper anyway. So kind of like, it's kind of helped a little bit. Uh, I can't think of anything else. I can't wait till I can put lotion on my legs, bruh. Especially my right one, it's a little bit ashy. Operative versus non-operative. So the thing with um, operative repair, it's almost a quicker healing time because you're forcing those tendon ends together and they have no choice but to grow together. Kind of like Venom the symbiote, right? They kind of like merge. If you do non-operative repair, prepare yourself for a longer recovery because um, quite frankly, you're gonna have scar tissue, so it's gonna be harder to stretch it out and strengthen and all that. Operative repair, you can get back to that previous level of play a little bit quicker. Virtually the, the results are the same, but you need to follow the protocol your doctor gives you week by week in the recovery process or else you could just re-rupture and it really won't matter because if you you know you don't follow the i swear if my dog walks under the tripod again i'm gonna fight her if you don't follow the protocol your doctor gives you you try to walk too soon you try to put pressure on it your tendon might heal long and you will never have that same power back again and i'm pretty sure you don't want to pay towards your deductible if you live in the states you don't want to pay towards your deductible every five months to get surgery because it healed long so we'll see how it goes should be interesting now the joy of editing this Ugh. welcome to the recovery process folks make sure to like comment subscribe share all that stuff especially if you're on your own achilles journey comment below if you have any questions i will be responding to the comments especially if you have some and we'll be on this recovery journey together peace